into a marble type of look or effect and that's the look we're going for. Next you're going to pick up your ornament and you're going to hold it on a 45 degree angle and you're just going to turn it and twist it and you're going to notice that the paint just starts flowing and it's going to start coating the inside of the ornament which is what we want. When there's no more paint that's actually flowing, um, you're going to repeat pouring your paint back in in layers and marbling it and then um, coating the remainder of your ornament. I just want to talk a bit about color combinations. With this method, you can actually pick any colors together without worrying that they're going to mix to make a muddy color. So just have fun and create different and unexpected color combos. I even added or mixed in glitter into one of my gold paints to make it extra glittery and festive. One note though, I actually found that using too much black paint overpowered the whole, all the rest of the colors. So if you're going to use black, just use one or two drops at a time. It's enough to make a big impact without having the whole ornament look too dark. You'll notice that since we layered our paint and mixed it with a skewer, you get this really cool marbled effect. I just want to let you know that when the ornament dries, it won't be as distinctly marbled since the paint actually drains out, but it'll still be very pretty and just more subtle. The last step is to place your ornament upside down in a jar or cup for the extra paint to drain out. I would leave it to drain overnight and then flip the ornament right side up to dry the rest of the way. no more paint left to flow you want to reload your ornament with some more paint and here again you can randomly add it um, on the sides of the ornament to the center um, in different and in a different order with the colors in a different order as well let's take a chance here to talk a bit about examples of designs we can do with this method so some people actually might like the look of having some of the clear parts of the ornament still show through since we're shaking it there are going to be some clear parts that are going to be in random places so your choice is either keep it clear or you can you can flow the, the paint down to have a fully cord, coated ornament it's really up to you here when you want to stop and when you feel your ornament is done for you um, so some examples what you could do in the end um, you can fill your ornament with fake snow so some of the fake snow shows through the clear parts of the ornament or you can just not fill it with anything. Um, it looks beautiful just having some clear parts um, in the ornament. Um, and I'm sure the sky is the limit here too. Next, I'd like to talk about color combinations with this method. In the first method, we weren't as concerned with creating muddy or brown colors, but for this method, since we're shaking the ornament, um, they will mix. So there is a potential to create brown or muddy colors. If you want to avoid that, um, here are some suggestions. So um, if you're using similar colors, they will work really well together. So greens, blues, and purples together would work really well or reds, pinks, oranges, and yellows would work together very well. 
and using white and black to any color combination would look beautiful. It would actually create some lighter and darker colors uh, when mixed, so those uh, you can use anytime. And if any in, in doubt, just try and mix it and see what you end up with. Sometimes brown is not a bad thing and can add some interest to the, uh, the color choices as well. Let's look at what the ornaments look like after they're dried. This ornament was from our first method, and as you can tell here, it's fully dried now, but I actually ended up having to put it in front of a fan for a couple hours, um, and that did the trick. So I, in terms of coloration, this, this method is a little bit more subtle when it's dried, but it's still very beautiful. An idea that came to mind is if you have a cutting machine, you can print out uh, festive words or even initials and customize it even more and stick it in front um, of the ornament and that would look very pretty as well. The next ornament was from the second method where we shook the paint and as you can tell here the colors and the design is much bolder and not as subtle as the first. I really like this look. I'm gonna show you a couple of other ornaments that I, I made and their color combinations. This one I really liked. Um, I ended up actually using just two colors, uh, blue and a lot of white. Um, and I love the marbling effect that came out with just using two, col two simple colors. Um, the next ornament was one of my favorites and I use red and gold and white and red and as you can see, it, a really cool swirl um, appeared after it dried and I think it looks really really cool. Um, just as a note I had mentioned earlier if you use too much black paint um, it can overpower the ornament and this was one of the first ones I did and I used quite a bit of black and as you can see here it was quite dark after it dried. This is another ornament you can do non-Christmas colors. You can do, I did here fluorescent pink, uh, turquoise, and white and silver. So you can, can ha you can have fun with the colors. And this is another fun one where I used orange, white, and hot pink, and I believe a little bit of gold as well. As promised at the beginning of this video, let's go over what happens when using regular dollar store acrylic paint versus using the pre-made acrylic pouring paint. I actually initially tried to use the pouring paint on the ornaments to begin with uh, because I thought it actually would work better since it's more fluid and meant for that kind of work. Turns out while it did flow better inside the ornament and initially coated it better, it actually didn't stick to the plastic um, ornament quite as well as the regular acrylic paint and it caused it to be a bit see-through. So you can actually see the difference between the ornament coated using the normal acrylic paint on the right where it opaquely covered the insides versus the left where I used the acrylic pouring paint and it was not opaque and it's actually see-through. I'm not 100% sure why this happens but I suspect that the paint is too runny and slides off faster than it can dry which affected the outcome. Thanks so much for watching the tutorial and hope it inspires you to create your very own ornaments for the holidays. If you liked watching and want to see more beginner acrylic painting tutorials and crafts like these, subscribe to my channel. Happy holidays everyone!